Hello, I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures, and this episode is about Astronomy Tools, a plugin for Photoshop. I'm making this video at the request of one of the viewers, Craig. I mentioned Astronomy Tools in a previous video, I think the one titled Deep Sky Images and Processing Them in Photoshop. I just mentioned Astronomy Tools in passing, though I didn't really go into it because that video was getting to be very long. So, in this video, I'll tell you more about it. Astronomy Tools is a plugin designed by Noel Carboni, and you can download it from the internet by going to his website, prodigitalsoftware.com. And here's the entire uh, URL. And then you pick either the version for Mac or PC, because it's compatible with either, depending on which computer you use. And it's $21.95 US dollars. The price has gone down since my previous video. And it's a one-time fee for a lifetime license. And once you download it, then you go into Photoshop and you put it in your plug-in folders. And it has many, many actions that it will perform to enhance your deep sky photos or skyscapes. A lot of them you can do in Photoshop already, but they take multiple steps, whereas with astronomy tools, you just click a button and it, and it does it, including removing magenta halos from your stars, uh, adding diffraction spikes to your stars, reducing star size, many, many actions that can enhance your photos. So. Let's go to the website. I'll show you how to get it. I'll show you how to add it to your Photoshop plugins and how to use some of the actions to enhance your photos. I don't have any recent photos I can use for this demonstration. I haven't taken any recently because the weather's been so abominable. So I had to search in my archives and find some raw photos which I found. There are 20 photos of NGC 7000, the North American Nebula. I don't know where I was when I took them. Frankly, I can't remember taking these particular photos because last year I went on a rampage and I took many photos of NGC 7000. All I know is that these are 20 photos that I took with a Sony crop sensor camera at ISO 3200 and they are each three minutes. So I'm going to stack them in Photoshop and um, then after I do that, I'll bring them into Photoshop and see if we can enhance the picture with astronomy tools. So assuming you have Photoshop already downloaded on your laptop or computer, next you go to prodigitalsoftware.com and go to products and select astronomy tools, how to buy. You add it to your cart, get your credit card ready, and pay $21.95 U.S. dollars. I'm not going to click it because I already have it on here and I don't want you to see my credit card. Once you've paid your $21.95, you download this astronomy tools to your hard drive. Then you open Adobe Photoshop and you go to Window, Actions, and you check that and you add the astronomy tools to your actions and there it is and you can see it's a very long list of actions that it can perform. I have no memory of taking these pictures but it's 20 pictures, 3 minutes each at ISO 3200 and I used a crop sensor Sony camera and that's all I know. <laughs> So I'm just going to get rid of chromatic aberration and heading. That's a release reduction. Loading it into Photoshop layers. Oh, 
okay, I took the 20 pictures and I made some changes in Adobe Camera Raw, and now I have loaded them into Photoshop as layers, and I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna auto align and then stack. And after it does that, I'm just going to use two filters in Photoshop and then see what kind of enhancements I can make with astronomy tools. Go to convert to smart object. And then I didn't see any star trails, so I will stack it using the mean mode. I'm just going to use the Adobe Photoshop noise, reduce noise filter, and also the Photoshop sharpen smart sharpen filters. And now I'm ready to see if I can enhance this picture with astronomy tools. First of all, if you don't see your actions, you go to window, make sure actions has a check mark or Alt F9, and then once you have your actions, put it near the picture so you can see all the actions and then also see what it does. And so a lot of these, you can see there are many I don't ever use. For example, these ones at the bottom that say B&W, I don't take black and white pictures, so I've never used those. But the ones, and some I don't use or or haven't used our color blotch reduction because I don't have color blotches or vertical banding. I don't have that. I have other problems. <laughs> but the ones that you will probably use the most will be light pollution removal if you take your pictures in a light polluted area, deep space noise reduction. But before we do anything, since I made my uh, picture into a smart object, you have to create a new layer by hitting this plus sign at the bottom right hand corner, create new layer, and then you have to use the stamp visible, and you do that by hitting control, alt, shift, e. And once you do that, then you can use the astronomy tools. So, Let's start off with the one I use the most, which would be deep space noise reduction. Make sure you've got the stamp visible layer selected, and then highlight what you want, and then go to the bottom of the actions and hit this arrow button to perform the action. Some of them take a while, and you can see up in the corner how many things it does. Um, because, as I said, you can do these manually on Photoshop, but they take many, many steps, a lot of them. And then, once you've performed an action, you can hit this eyeball and turn it off and on and see if it did anything. So, it's very subtle, um, so we'll leave that one. Next one you might use a lot. I, I'm not sure about this light pollution removal because I don't know where I was, but we can try it, and if we don't like it, we can get rid of it. So highlight light pollution removal, hit the arrow key. I think the radius is way too big. You should reduce that to maybe, I don't know, five pixels. We'll just leave that. All right, and then let's turn that off and on. I think it helped. Uh, so I'll leave that one. Next thing you might want to try is to enhance the deep sky object and reduce noise. This one right here. So we'll highlight that and hit the arrow key and see if it helps. And you can see up in the top right hand corner how many steps it takes to perform that action. And then let's see if we like that. I don't like this. That looks funky. I, I, I don't think I like that one. I think it's weird. I, I'm going to get rid of that one. So all you do is you hit Control Z on a PC, on a Mac, I guess. You hit Command Z. I'm not really sure. Um, let's try something else. Let's try the... Um, 
You can reduce uh, halos around your stars. I don't have any. My stars have other problems, <laughs> but they don't have halos. And you can hit Control Plus to make it bigger to see. Um, I don't know what these weird lines are. Um, so I don't have any halos. So we're not going to do that one. You might want to try, you can make your star smaller. We can try that. I think this one takes a, a while because if you do it manually in Photoshop, it has quite a few steps. And I don't have any banding. We can try this reduce. We don't have any halos but we can increase star color. See what that does. One thing that L Enhance Pro does is it makes the stars green for some reason. So let's see if this helped. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to show you I do not use this. You can put diffraction spikes on your stars. I think it makes your picture look uh, fake. I, it's just a personal choice. I'm just not a big fan of it. But if you want to, you can put small, medium, or fat diffraction spike. Okay, so if you want to compare from your original picture, you can, uh, I got rid of that one, I didn't like it, but you can um, see what each thing did and see if you like it. If you don't like it, just hit Control Z and get rid of it. And you just can experiment with these. Uh, another one that you might want to use is the less crunchy, more fuzzy. So just experiment with those and see if you can make your picture look better. I think that this helped. And so that's about all I have to say about it. And once you're happy with it, you just, uh, you know, crop it if you want to. And then you export it like you would any other picture. So that's it for this episode on using astronomy tools. A handy and inexpensive way to drastically improve your astro photos and skyscapes if you use Photoshop to develop them. I hope you got something out of it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, go outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>